Let's go. You're one of my first returning guests, Monica. How do you feel about this? You know, I feel like it's awesome. It's great. When you think about it, like there's so many things that you can talk about. So, and when you have shared experiences getting into details with things like it only makes sense why wouldn't I come back (laughs) I know like we'll have to have like a third fourth fifth time like in the future um but the first time that you were on here we talked a lot about your recruiting journey you know a little bit about you know that goal of yours but I'm just excited because later on I really want to dive into this new book you have um I know last time we talked you didn't have this book maybe you were thinking about the book but it wasn't out yet Mm-hmm. Um, but we're definitely going to dive into this book, but before we do, you're also newly retired. How yeah. does, how does that feel? Is it wild? Like what type of emotions do you have right now? Gosh, you know what? Let's see. I've been retired for, I don't know, almost five months, four or five months now. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so good. Really? Um, That's awesome. Yeah. I think my, towards the end of my career, like the last year, I kind of had a, I kind of knew like, okay, like you start as a player, you start to kind of realize, okay, I think when you, well, when you played, I was lucky enough to play as long as I did. And those athletes that play for a really long time, you start to get this feeling of like, okay, like I know my time is coming. I know I've got to say goodbye. And I think that last season that I played with Team USA and uh, with Toyota, I was able to kind of come to peace with all of those things and really Mm -hmm. like soak it up. Ultimately, like it was still like for like before I announced it, like I knew I was going to retire. And um, for about a month and a half, two months, I was just like, oh, my God, this is like devastating. Like, what am I going to do with my life? But yeah, it's scary. uh, yeah, it was scary. It was super scary, but, um, I was able to take some time to come to peace with it before I was actually, you know, made it public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, from an outsider's perspective, it felt like the, the perfect final curtain call. Like it was just like, it kind of played itself out so nice. And I'm saying this because, you know, I still followed you when you were in Japan and I was like, oh, like, and I knew you had announced that you were retiring from Japan. And so many people are like, is she going to retire like fully retire. Yeah. And I'm like, I feel like if she's leaving Japan, she probably, it's probably going to happen because I know how much you loved playing in Japan. Yeah. Well, you know, Japan was just like a means for my career. Like it allowed me to be a pro for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had even like my last year that summer, you know, Japan season ends in the fall. So it's just like a, you know, a logistics thing. Even my last summer with USA, that last summer at the world games and world championships in Birmingham, like I kind of knew, like, I I think this is about to be it. And people were like, no, you got to keep playing, keep going 2028. I knew Mm -hmm. I was already going to be done with Toyota. We had like pre-negotiated that. Um, And I, I, the only reason I hadn't announced in the States because I was thinking, okay, like I want to, I was trying to figure out how I could have like a last, showdown kind of thing yeah. or a last game on U.S. soil whether mm-hmm. that was in my hometown whether that was at the Palm Springs tournament whether that was you know like just just like a game someplace where people could come to watch like the last thing like a big last mm-hmm. thing and I just realized that like that would be so hard <laughs> to pull yeah. off accomplish like yeah, I feel like I can do a lot of things, but being able to do something like that, it wasn't really realistic with the the U.S. softball calendar, like the way Team USA was going. All their events were in this summer are all overseas, like they're not even playing in the U.S. this year. Like, Hard. and then if I did the WPF, that would be the entire summer. If I did AU, like that's like a whole like that doesn't make sense I'm gonna go to AU for one season to retire like yeah it's like yeah it didn't logistically match up so I was like okay like I think I just gotta like yeah pull off this, the band-aid yep let it play out the way it's it. supposed to but yeah, play yeah. Out. so physically how do you like I'm sure you feel amazing because you're not putting your body through all that stress anymore I know I, my, I know actually, like, I'm, I'm just like, wow, I'm not throwing every day. I'm not pitching, um, or even like strength training the way I was Mm -hmm. 
feel like I still live a healthy lifestyle. Like I enjoy, you know, sweating daily or um, being active, but it's definitely weird. Like coming up with that routine again. And um, I, I miss that community working out with people and yep. working with my team and um, going through phases of life together, like that yeah. daily interaction with them. Yeah. I think that was one of the hardest parts for me. Cause I even like studied to be a strength coach. I love the weight room so much. Mm -hmm. And I think when I stopped playing that meant like my workouts don't have to be as intense anymore. And for a while, like that was hard for me. I'm like, wait, I want to pick up heavy weight, which I still do. Well, I mean, you know, only eight weeks postpartum. I can't do what I yeah. used to do yet. Easy, easy, easy. Yeah. 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 Um, my doctor would kill me if I did. But yeah, also, uh, I just, totally get just it. give it a couple, like give it like eight months or soon, <laughs> and soon enough, like you could just do squats with the baby. Like. Oh, hundred percent. He's already 10 pounds. So <laughs> yeah, but that was one of the hardest parts for me. What's been like the hardest part for you? Do you think, um, on the workout side, any, like anything like it could be, you know, identity. I know a lot of people struggle with that once they, you know, stop playing. Um, I, I think the, well, Hmm. Hmm. I know. Hard question. I think lifestyle wise, like I love to work out when I was playing and I still do. Um, but I think finding that like consistent routine and something that I love, um, that still keeps me like feeling good. That part, yeah. um, has been difficult. Like, um, and then I think also too, I just feel like where do I want to fit into the softball world now? Like, mm -hmm. I know I'm going to be involved in softball. I know like I have, you know, I'm Monica Abbott, but finding that level in that impact of where I can be, that's going to sustain me. Um, I was, that's going to sustain me like with a couple things, like in my, my point is to feel that love of the game and to give back to the game, um, to, make some sort of a living. Right. Right. Because, you know, I still have my, my own bills. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. So to be able to like have that and then just to give back to the sport. So how do I encompass the love of the game that I have, um, make a living and then also give back to the sport all, all in one, all in whatever I decide to do yeah. next. And that's yeah. the part that has been a little bit of a challenge to kind of narrow down, like I have tons of ideas and avenues and ways to do it, but just like kind of narrowing it down into, okay, this is where you should focus. And that part's been a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah, that makes total sense. I, I struggle with the same thing, even like today sometimes, because, you know, I've, I've tried to build this business around, you know, helping athletes, especially like ones that have big goals, like giving them resources to be able to achieve the things that they want to achieve. And I know you and I have had conversations, you know, not recorded conversations around how can we still grow the game um, while not playing, but there's so many yeah. different avenues and that's the fun part. And again, you're only a few months out of this. Like the fact that you're already coming out with a book already, you know, showing yeah. up on a podcast to talk about things. Like, I think you're doing a great job. Truly. <laughs> yeah. You know, I want to be able, I realize that like I have, as an athlete, I had like this unique gift, right. And ability. Um, but I also realized that I, I also have like impacted a lot of, a lot of athletes and people, right. Like not just softball mm -hmm. players, coaches, parents, families, um, brothers, like people in the game. So I realized that it's important for me to be able to like reach people at different levels, right. Yeah. Like I can't just narrow down into like, Hey, you're only gonna, you know, if I, I don't want, I feel, I feel that I can't just narrow down too early because I need to be able, I feel like I need to reach different levels of people and different levels of athletes and their yep. families and their people, their circles. So yeah. I know I have a good story and a good, uh, good voice for them to share. Yeah, you do. Okay. Speaking of story, let's dive into the book. So your yes. book rise and shine, the Monica Abbott story. It sounds like it's almost like a memoir, but also like an inspirational story about like yeah. how you can achieve your dreams. How would you, oh, you know, totally. within like a minute or two preface or talk about, you know, what is that book? What, why did you create the book? You know, like what, what is the mission of it? 
So Rise and Shine, I would say, is an inspirational story. It's the story of the impossible dream coming true. You know, yeah. Um, it's the story of your back against the wall and finding a way through it. It's the story of like your struggles as uh, an athlete and finding a way to finding a way to use them, using your struggles as and turning them into a strength and turning them into something that's powerful for you. That's what Rise and Shine really is about. Um, and it just chronicles my career. And I, I feel like, you know, we see, we see books out there, right? Like, I think I can count on one hand, how many books on softball or on a softball player have been written. I think what there's one on Jenny wrote a book, mm-hmm. Jenny Finch wrote a book and like, maybe I think Tony Paisley came out with a book not too long ago, but okay, yeah, maybe Tony it's a picture out. thing, apparently. <laughs> Well, I mean, we got these stories to share. So, I mean, there's just not that many people that have been able to actually um, do this. So just being able to have the opportunity. I mean, I think I remember when I was a young girl and like, I loved, or even I, I loved reading about other sports stars. Like, how cool is that? Like, this is their story. You know, how can I, so how can I apply it to my life? So why not give the softball world the story right to give them the story that they can apply to their life and they can they can be inspired and motivated to continue on in their career yeah is there a specific age group that you wrote it for or was it hard to try to get everybody involved like okay if you play softball the authors debbie and rob shriver Mm -hmm. uh, and i we had a huge like debate about this because it was like actually really hard to talk about the actual age group um Mm -hmm. so we ended up our um we ended up actually I was like okay I feel like the 14 you know like normal 14 16 12 year to 16 years kind of like the age group that it would you would think like they're they're working their goals and their dreams and all this stuff that mm-hmm. can be really impactful. But as we talked a lot about, but honestly, like we, I have such an impact on like a lot of people that are moms these days, right. Or like, or their parent or grandparents these days. And then there's this whole other aspect of like, you can't just leave out some of the, the big moments in my career that maybe a whole other generation may love. Like mm-hmm. the whole title, like I was a, you know, an athlete of title nine, but like the million dollar contract, you can't leave that out. And that creates this whole other like gener- generation and age of people that want to read, read about those stories. So yeah. what we ended up doing is kind of making it and we decided we're going to make it an easy, quick read was the goal not to make it like we want to target the youth, but make it mature enough for, um, the older, some of the parents and older generations. And we did that by in sections, basically it's the first chapters, you know, my story, like how I grew up, what, how I started playing the game, second chapters, college, you know, then it's the 2008 Olympic games and then the pro league and playing professionally in the States. And then it's the 2020 Tokyo games. And then of course I had to in- include like the overseas aspect, right? So I played for Toyota yeah. for so long. I had to add that in. And then we included an, a women's empowerment um, chapter as well, just because playing at Tennessee is such a huge thing for women's sports and being at the forefront. You know, when I played, when I was in college, you know, playing in the Women's College World Series, I was at the forefront of the TV boom for softball. Um, I was that, I was that generation. So, um, and then the million dollar contract. So we felt like we had to add that women's empowerment and some of those things for, for, you know, the moms and people that are a little bit older, the dads that want to like hear about a little bit more of that stuff. And so that, so we tried to just mesh it all together. Yeah. (laughs) That's so it's, it's truly like the whole story itself is inspiring, no matter how old you are. Like, I, I was telling you off the cuff before this, like momhood is like a whole, it's like, 
building upon a new yeah. sport. It's like trying mm-hmm. something brand new. It's like you're you're failing all the time trying to figure out this new board. But like, I feel like even that, it's just like starting softball for the first time, you know? Yeah. And and I'm so glad that you share, you know, the initial story, which we did get to hear a little bit about in the first interview. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that you mentioned in the first interview that I, I want to repeat is like, if I remember correctly, your older sister got pitching lessons before you did. And mm-hmm. you're, you had approved to your mom that you really wanted to be a pitcher. And this yeah. was like very early on. And your mom was like, it wasn't like, oh yeah, I'll just pay for pitching lessons. No, you had to work for it. Like it was one of those things where you had to prove that you wanted it. Um, so there's so many, um, did that story make the book? Yeah. 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 There's a, there's a big, big chunk on that because, you know, um, before that, I mean, I wasn't really, (laughs) I wasn't very good at softball. I wasn't like, I was just kind of hanging out because my sister was there. I love cheers. I love (laughs) snacks. running after foul balls so I could get candy from the <laughs> the snack bar yeah we all have I a, know, we that's all a have a beginning story yeah yeah it's so relatable on any level so I just love that and I love that it's about struggle to strength because you know from people that look from the outside in it might not look like you struggle like at all I think right. that's the thing that Instagram you know everybody's like oh you see everybody's highlight reel like their life must be perfect But I think it's important to share, especially in a book, you know, where, where you struggled, because I feel like you don't become the best without struggling a ton. Yes. What are some of those, what are some of those struggle stories that have made the book that, um, maybe will inspire people to go grab this book, which I hope everybody does. I think like, I, gosh, I can't remember everyone that I put in there, but I know the college years, like that one at Tennessee, especially the whole freshman year, my whole freshman year. And and now it's kind of a cool story. It comes full circle um, at Tennessee, but I really talk about the struggles I had my freshman year um, and some issues I had with just the whole system and honestly growing up being away from home, um, having new coaches, just learning the system and just not really knowing how to express myself. I think like, so it was, that was probably those college years. That was a really big, um, that was a really big growing pain for me. And, um, I think that one really shows a, a lot of, a lot of the struggles I had, um, that I eventually became obviously, you know, where I am to where I finished, I was able to use it somehow. Um, did you ever have, did you ever have like an awkward stage? Like where you just didn't, I wouldn't put that in the book though. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, okay. Then, then this podcast gets the exclusivity (laughs) of this, but you know, I, Um, I remember having, you know, being such a nerd of softball almost and and also very tall. I don't know if that comes with it. I, I like always try to downplay my height a little bit, but I just was very awkward and I didn't feel like I could be myself. I like this know. is outside of softball. Like, did you go through that at all? Cause for me, that was a big struggle growing up. I had a huge struggle with like my height and just being like how tall I was, that I was taller than all the boys. Like yeah. that was, like, killed me. And, that uh, I and was I'm sure excited. they had things to say. I'm sure boys had like, yeah. oh, they were tripping. Course. Mm. We don't need to, we don't need to talk about what they Boys said. suck sometimes. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry guys. We love them, but they, gosh darn it. <laughs> I know. But like when you're, yeah, I totally struggled because I wanted, I was, and then I became like very, very athletic. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like almost more athletic than most of the boys. So then that compounded it. Right. And so like, like the yeah. only place that I felt like I fit in for a long time was like literally on the pitching mound in yes. the circle on game day that's so relatable yes you know I was like awkward and like my body grew too fast and I would like be uncoordinated at practice and then I stood on the mound and I was like doing everything like so cool I was like so Mm -hmm. cool out there (laughs) yeah that's where I felt like I could be myself too like it's so funny I'm sure that's so relatable to so many listening um what about that go ahead No, you go, go ahead. What about that fifth grade you? Were you awkward then too? Or like the fifth grade you is the one who decided she wanted to be an Olympian. Is that where? No, I was cute. I was super (laughs) cute. I was super cute and sassy and like so fun. And like, Mm -hmm. yeah. No. I I was just like 
you know, your eyes are wide and everything's bright and colorful and fun. And yeah. Yeah. Dreams always um, start when we're young, but yeah. how did, how were you able to make the dream? So that's when your Olympic dream, you, this is probably the first time you saw it. How did you see it? First of all, did you see other people that were Olympians and you wanted to be like them? How did that first dream come alive? I, oh my gosh, the unconventional way. <laughs> I actually, um, in fifth grade, we had to do reports. We had to mm -hmm. do like state reports. We're learning about our country. And I was like trying to get the state of California. I was like, I want to do California. Me, me, me. <laughs> And then I didn't get it. Went to someone else. There was like a draw, you know, all the California people that won in California. I didn't win in the raffle. And then I tried to get Nevada because that's the only other state I'd been to. And then I tried to get Hawaii because it sounded cool. <laughs> well, and I ended up like, I was so mad. I, I didn't get any of the states I wanted. All the states were gone. And my teacher put me in with Georgia. And it was at that time was 1996 I hadn't been pitching yet and the Olympic games were in Atlanta wow. so I did this state report and we had to like write the governor and all of these things so I had to write and the report wasn't even on the Olympics it was just on the state like state's flower like yeah what's its industry like what is all the things about it you know and so I did this report and I was like oh my gosh this is kind of fun and I got all this information and we're like, okay, we got to, we have got to add something about the Olympics in there. And so my mom like helped me find some Olympic stuff that was happening and we put it in the report and I wrote in the report, like, Hey, like softball, you know, at this point, I didn't even know, like that was the first Olympics for softball. I was like, and you know, is hosting, you know, Atlanta, Georgia is hosting the 1996 Olympic games. And I'll see you there. I'll be, I'll be on the softball field or whatever. Yeah, and let's go. I'll be on the softball field wearing team, wearing USA or whatever. Calling your shot. <laughs> I, I love I it. I hadn't even started pitching yet. That's so cool. Like, but yeah, that's the power of like seeing a future for yourself. Right. And then what was, what was even really cool about that is just like the power of like little things, you know, um, my mom then. So the Olympic flame, you know, does a tour across the country and mm -hmm. it went, it came through our town on the train. And so like, it kind of stopped at the train station and like ran around it or whatever. And my mom like pulled me out of school and she's like, we're going to go see the Olympic flame. <laughs> wow. Shout out to your mom. Like so shout, out to Julie for, shout out to Julie for giving me a fake dentist appointment and taking me to see the Olympic flame. Let's go, Julie. That's Julie, amazing. The, you're a star. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so, I love that. I think, you know, we all need people, especially like parents, a lot of parents listen to this. Like it's little things like that. Like you remember that story of like seeing the Olympic flame. That was like enough for you to feel like it's real, you know, yeah. that is oh, so that cool. Is, like, possible. I mean, just, I don't know. I just think anything is, anything is possible. I think. Yeah, truly. Like anything can truly come true. Uh, yeah. It's not easy and there's a lot of work and you're going to be like challenged and you're going to want to quit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're mm -hmm. for sure going to want to quit, but, and there, you're going to feel like it's impossible and you're going to feel defeated at times, but you're going to have wins along the way. And if you keep remembering the wins, and you keep trying to duplicate the wins, then eventually you're going to get a really, really big championship. Yeah. Yeah. No matter if it's like a USA championship or, you know, your little rec league championship, whatever it yeah. is, like you're going to see more of them, you know, being someone who I also had dreamt to be an Olympian, not and not, I don't have like a fun story like yours, but I do remember watching the 2008 Olympics mm -hmm. and like, but knowing that was going to be the last Olympics for softball. And it was like heartbreaking because oh I was God. at the age where it was like, you know, do I want to continue to play and try mm -hmm. to get there? And like, not knowing if like, to me, I was like, it's not coming back. Like mm -hmm. it won't come back for a while, which it didn't come back for a while. Um, so I felt like my dream was just like crushed, but like you were able to like dream the thing, go play in 2008 
And I think a lot of people my age kind of maybe had the same dream, but I didn't get there, obviously, because yeah. I was like, well, if I play for Team USA, then I'm not going to play in, in the Olympics. I'm now looking looking back at it. If I knew it was coming back in 2020, I might have changed my mind, but you just don't know. But yeah, you just you just don't know. I think now I will say, like, gosh, politics suck, but yeah, it's wild. Yeah. But I do think like there is a whole generation of softball players that didn't get the opportunities they deserved to wear their country across their chest. And mm-hmm. I would say even myself included, yeah, I was able to I was able to play USA in 2008 and and I hung on long enough to be able to play in 2020. But in the prime of my, I was the youngest player on the 2008 Olympic team. Like the youngest, there was, there was like two, I think three rookies. Like, I mean, Mm -hmm. so like a rare spot, right? Like, so I somehow was able to do that, but like the prime of my career in 2012 and 2016, like I should have been pitching in the Olympic games for the world to see, um, those yeah. are my best years. And instead, you know, I was wearing a bandits uniform or a scrapyard uniform and, you know, hoping people would show up to watch, to watch those games, those epic pro league battles. But I definitely do feel like there was a generation of softball players that were great, that like dominated and were so fun to watch. And they should have had an opportunity to compete on the world stage. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. But I have to ask, you know, you got to wear the USA. What was it like wearing USA for the first time? Um, I think it's like almost like surreal. Like you keep like kind of like I remember like getting the uniform and being like, oh my gosh. Like I just want to stare at it. So cool. Like, and I was kind of like, I I remember I think I was kind of like scared to put it on at first. I like just kind of like this real. Yeah, is this real? Like, oh my God. just put it on like the put it on like my bed or whatever and just like um just like walked through the house like multiple times staring at it like is it still there is it still there yeah yeah Um, and the first game is definitely like definitely a sense of like pride and a sense of joy and then like also like just adrenaline running through your veins (laughs) because Mm -hmm. you're like this is the coolest moment of my life oh my gosh yeah and then and then it hits you like, uh, you know, I don't know, a little while later, like, Hey, like now you're wearing USA. Like now it's time. Like you, you got to represent, like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you got to show up every day. You got to show up with your best every day because it, there could be someone in the stands that, Hey, it's their first time ever watching, uh, watching a softball game. It's their first time ever watching team USA play. And how, how are you going to show up for them? How are you going to represent for them? How are you going to be the epitome of a professional for our sport? That's pretty special. What did your family think when you were, you know, invited to try out and then got the spot? Um, they were just like, they just like a hundred percent supported me. They were, they were thrilled. I mean, bless their hearts. I was so driven, like, and focused. So they just did everything they could to support me. And we had like a big celebration dinner and all those things, um, which was cool. Yeah. So I know there's a lot of, you know, young athletes, maybe even older athletes that have this dream. They have the goal. They want to play for team USA. Can you break down how, I mean, I know part of this is in the book, but like break down, like how, how did it start? Which you kind of started with that, but like, how did you get there? Like what, what about your goal setting? Um, and your work ethic, like what got you there truly? Yeah, actually, this is actually this funny, funny you should ask, but so if I had, so when I was writing Rise and Shine, Rise and Shine's like the, the ultimate inspirational story. It tells all the things, right? But when I was writing it, I obviously was like softball player brain, like Mm -hmm. this is such a cool story, but don't people want to know how like if rise yeah. and shine is the inspirational story and it, it motivates you don't people want to know the how how did they do it how did she actually do it so we came up i we and the author my, myself and the authors we came up with what we call abbott's a list which is 14 actions for success 
It's actually in the very back of Rise and Shine and it has tidbit, has like a little snippet of 14 different things in the book. But while we did it, we were like, okay, like we need to take it a step further. Like it can't just be like this list of 14 actions, like set your goals and all these sort of things. Mm -hmm. So we actually did a workbook. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this workbook. And it's kind of like a workbook slash journal, but mm -hmm. it's called Abbott's A-List, how to bring it on and off the field. And it has everything from like uh, 14 steps. So number five is like, be great at something and what you do. So it had it details like why this was important or how it showed showed up throughout my career and why it was a theme in my career. And then it kind of you get points on like how to figure out what you're great at, what's the thing that you can do to make it great, and how can you, if you have something good in this situation, it says the thing I'm good at, this is the thing I'm good at, and this is the thing I'm gonna make great. Mm. So how do we how do I do that? Um, yeah. What know, was that like, step for you? At that moment, like if you, yeah, different things throughout my career, but mm -hmm. I would say, um, one would be like throwing, throwing hard, right? Yeah. Like I, I could, all, I could throw fast, but then I really was like, okay, like I can throw fast, but like, I should try to throw really fast. Like I, did, mm -hmm. I should actually try to like throw it harder than ever. Like let's set a goal. Can you hit 80 miles per hour? Can you like hit 75 consistently? And so when I dived all into like throwing that hard, that's when I was able to do, you know, the Guinness record of 77. That's when I was able to like do some of those incredible speed things. Um, I love it. it. In, like with my rise ball, like I was good at throwing the rise ball, but then, you know, the reason I was able to make the Olympic team is because I went all in on this rise ball and started to find ways to like control and like spotted on levels and angles and 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 levels angles and locations so and that like really separated myself and made my rise ball that was good like whew, really great like olympic yeah. level like perfect game at the olympic level great so yes i love that at different stages you were having different things that you were good at that you were working to become great i think yes. i'm thinking of the did you ever watch the documentary i think it's called the last dance about mm -hmm. like michael jordan the bulls um it reminds me of like the story of you know if he wasn't that good at let's say a certain distance of a jump shot like that is what he was good at right but he was going to strive to become great. And that was the year he was going to become great at it. And then the next year he found something different, like free throws or something. And he just kept yeah. changing the things that he was good, make them great. And now all of a sudden he is what he is. And it, yeah, it exactly. reminds me of you. Oh, 100%. Whoa. That's so, I, but yeah, the greats so think alike. That's all I'm going to yeah. say. The greats think alike. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Michael Jordan's amazingly great. Uh, <laughs> give yourself that. credit you're amazingly great at softball so occasionally great at softball but yeah so this is like number five in abbott's a list is called be great at something mm -hmm. and so this workbook i just has like there's these different themes right like these different themes in my your career that kind of like i think you could probably even think about things that helped you get to where you were right like 100 percent and they kind of like show up over and over. And when I was like, okay, like I need to share these because I feel like these are the things that made the inspirational story come true. Yes. So, so if I'm really doing a service, right. If I'm really doing a service and really like standing in my truth of like, Hey, like I want to inspire and motivate the future generation. I want to give them the dream. I want to help build their dream. I want to be a part of their dream. I have to give them the how, the how to, yeah. how to do it. Give them an action plan beside it, reading it, practicing, all that stuff is great. But when you really dive into it, we each have different themes and different actions that really help us be successful. Mm -hmm. So if it's something like number five, be great at something, hey, let's talk about it. Like, what is the one thing that you're really good at right now? Can you make it even better? Can you make it great? Can you make it Olympic great? And then how does that open up your game? 
right? Like how does that open up everything else for you? Because you took your good and you made it great. You made it so, so good. So, so great. Right. And then all of the other things that you're doing, all of the, all of a sudden, those are going to complement your great, right? They're going to complement that one thing that was great. And it's going to make it even, even better. So that's what Abbott's A-list is. It's really just the how, the mm -hmm. how I did it. Um, if I could put it into themes and actions, um, that's what, it, that's what this is about. Yeah. So this is like, perfect. Everybody's going to go read the book itself first, be inspired by the story. Yes. And then, exactly. and then they can look forward to reading the how now yeah. I, I haven't seen you share a whole lot of the how. So like, are we yes. getting like a special like access <laughs> to what's going on back here or what? Yes, you guys totally are. I have like mostly just promoted rise and shine because it's such, it was such a big project mm -hmm. and rise and shine has Abbott's A-list in the back of it as like a preview. Yeah. Um, and then after the book was written, we're like, we gotta, we gotta put this, in, we need to finish the A-list and make sure like that's available too. Um, so it's, I've been kind of like trickling it out into the world. Like it's available on my website right now to this day. I think, oh, you, okay. can even get, I think you can even get like a combo package if you want, like, let's go, <laughs> let's figure go. I mean, this is the world we're living in. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just think like, it was just one of those things that I feel like the story needed to be told first. Mm -hmm. um, so then you, so then you can have the action plan to do it. So I don't that's know. amazing I don't, yeah it's just kind of like one of those things like hey I think this is really dope and so freaking awesome like I wish I had this when I played and that's probably why I made it <laughs> but, right I love but, that it, what's yeah. cool is so people that are just listening they couldn't see you and you were like putting it up to the screen but this interview is going to be on YouTube too where people can look okay. but what I just saw is that you know you could write in it like that yes it's, it's meant to be a journal and I think that's the yeah. stuff. That's where it's going to stick. Like people are going to yeah. write down, not just their goals, but like, you know, what am I great at right now? How can I make it great? I think that is so powerful yes. that they it's can write this stuff down. It's definitely meant for you to write on. And like when we did it too, we, we wanted to make it somewhat small so that it would fit in your ball bag. Like if you yeah. wanted to, like you could just put it in your bat bag um, and then in between games, something happened, you could, you could reference it. Okay. Like I need to do this more, or this is what I wrote before. So I, I know this, so you could put it, it's like a piece of your equipment. Um, you don't have to do it that way. You can put it on your nightstand too, but, um, so it is like, kind of like have a nice sheen so that if you wanted to put it in, it would still stay nice. Um, yeah. That's yeah. perfect. I love that. Now it sounds like, cause I know there's a lot of people that have these goals and they want to make them happen. It sounds like the cliff notes version of how you became great was you just kept finding things like one at a time that you were good at that you wanted to make great. And then you just kept repeating that. And that's how you came up the ladder. Is that how, is that how you would describe it? Or would you add anything else? Um, Yeah. I think I would describe it that way. That's a great Cliff Notes version. I think that's one of the main things. That's one of the main things. Obviously, there's an account. There's fourteen. There's 14. I was gonna say you're gonna have to go get there's the book to find all the others. Yes. And that's just that's just one of them. But yeah, I think that was a big component that helped. I think when I look at the things that I made great, that was the component that that took me to the next level that I wanted to compete at. So when you're, you know, in travel ball and, or I don't know, let's say you're in like 14 U, right. And then you're going into high school. Okay. So, okay. I need to, I need to step my game up. Okay. So I'm in high school. I'm going off to college. I need to step my game up. Okay. I'm a freshman and sophomore. I'm going into my junior, senior year. I need to step my game up. Like those different levels that you jump from college to pro pro to the Olympics, all those things that's when number five really show, continue to show up, be great at something, um, continue to show up. That's awesome. Well, so you said everybody can find both of these books. I mean, I think your, yes. your book is actually the, the main book rise and shine is on Amazon, but you can probably yes. find both on your website. You said, right? Yes. So rise and shine is on Amazon. 
And if you if you want a signed copy, you have to get it through my website, obviously. But Abbott's Abbott's A list is only available in person or on my website. It's not available um, online anywhere else. So. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I've already got the inside scoop. Go yes, get this do. book. So do your listeners. Yes. Go At get this book. You guys. I know. I feel so special. You're the you best. Should. Um, I need to ask though, are you cool to do another five to thrive to wrap this up today? Sure. Yeah. The five rapid fire sure. questions that I didn't tell you were coming again, but here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. First question. I know you love to run. Okay. You yeah. always post about it. Um, I'm, I've never really been a runner. I think it's a pitcher thing. Like I, I love to sprint all day long. I love sprinting. I don't like running long distances, but you do. What is like your go-to song right now that like, when you listen to it, you run a little faster or get like super pumped up by, um, I really like Lizzo. Let's go. I love Lizzo. I really like Lizzo or any like, you know, like dance, like the, the dance remixes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Love it. Um, do you have a favorite moment of your career that just like stands out as like one of the highlights of your career? Ooh, I have so many good moments. I know. Um, it's probably hard to pick one. Yeah, you did have like an over 20 year career, so I can yeah. see why this is hard. You can be like two or three. Um, I think winning the world championship in Japan in 2018 with Team USA, um, definitely a highlight. Um, the Chicago Bandits versus the USSA Pride, uh, epic battles in championship series and things like that. Those are huge highlights um, and memories just because those games were so freaking epic. They're so hard and so good. Um I think the strike breaking this NCAA strikeout record, uh, my senior year in college, um, which still stands. Yes. No, I'm kidding. I love <laughs> somebody it. Please break, somebody please break it already. <laughs> no. Hey, they um, got some great pitchers at Tennessee right now. Yeah, they do. Um, so I think that for sure. What else? I don't know. Making the Olympic team. They're all highlights. Yeah. I have so many, I have so many happy memories. Like I'm beyond, beyond blessed, but like, I don't know. I never thought that I would be playing as long as I did. I dreamed about it, but I got a ton of highlights. So yeah, I love that so much. Um, I need to know, do you have any talents other like outside of softball that you can brag upon yourself? No, (laughs) come on. There's gotta be one. Um, I'm a really good, uh, motivational speaker. Hey, that's, no, I don't, that's not a talent. Um, no, I don't have any other talents outside of softball. Dang. I thought we were going to get I, like a, the inside scoop. I'm a pretty like, good cook. I, I was going to say, Hey, like maybe you can make eggs really good or something. <laughs> I'd make a great avocado toast. <laughs> hey, that's a talent. Some people can't do that. We'll, yeah. we'll take it. We'll take it. Okay. And maybe towards the end, you'll be like, oh, wait, I got one. Who knows? Um, Is there one lesson that softball has taught you that kind of like sticks out that you kind of wish other people would know? Like, what's a big lesson that you learned throughout playing? Um, I know the um, book has like 50 lessons. Yeah, I would say two things. One is just like, everything is figure outable. <laughs> yes. I have a book called that by Marie yeah. Forleo. Have you read it? No, I haven't. No, but, but I need to, I need definitely need to buy that book. Yeah. It's true though. Yeah. Every, you can figure everything out. And then two is like, just keep going, keep going. I think it's not even about the, like, never give up. It's just like, keep going, stay in the fight. Like, Mm-hmm. it's going to get better. Like it's going to get so much better. Just keep going. Um, yeah, I think sometimes we stop right before we should. And that's mm-hmm. when you're right on the edge of something great. So just, just keep going. Love that. Now that kind of probably bleeds into my last five to thrive question, but what would you say to a fifth grader who, you know, has the Olympic dream? Mm-hmm. Like, you might 
and you might repeat what you just said. I don't know. But like, if somebody, if let's say you're looking back at you at fifth grade, like, what did you need to hear? What, it, what does that little girl need to hear? Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Why Let's not? It. Hey, why not you? Yeah. Why not you? Yeah. But what if they have like all those people around them that say, you can't do this? Huh. Huh. Who cares? No. Like, don't, don't let anyone tell you what you can't do. The only person that can tell you that is you. Hmm yeah That's literally, literally why not you why why not you like you have what it takes it's just up to you to to harness it to pull it out of yourself yeah sometimes you're the only one who knows it mm-hmm. that's yeah that's and in really time good. and in time people will know too others will know too and those people will help lift you up Love it. I love it. Well, Monica, you are doing, you're changing the game, literally making a book, (laughs) making a book when there's not many out there. I hope everybody listening is inspired to go grab it, especially the addition of, um, the A-list. I think that's incredible. And I I truly think like both of those together, you're going to spark so many dreams. I'm just so excited for you. you. This is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a fun, it's been a fun project. So, and I hope just the softball world and our softball baseball community just like absolutely love it and like latch onto it. So thank you for having me and thank you everyone uh, for supporting this project. Um, I hope you love the book and the A-list. Amazing. Well, I love you and I'm excited for all the things to come for you and however I can help, just let me know. Yeah. Love you too. Have Mm -hmm. a, have a good one, everyone. Thanks for tuning in.